Heavenly Father, I just thank you for tonight, Lord, and I thank you for the opportunity to be back and just learn and open our hearts and our minds, Lord, and help Dr. Jim, Lord, to just um, really teach us and, and uh, spark a fire in us for you. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John 10 and 6, 17 is where we are. John 10 and 17. Jesus has been debating with the... Uh, hi, Brandy. Hi. Hi. <coughs> Did you bring your book today? I can't find it. It's in a packing box somewhere. All right. Well, we'll get... Uh, we've got two of them right down there in the bottom. Just go ahead and get a couple of them for you. It, no, no, that that one right there, on the right side. They should be right there, right where your hand is. The other one, Exodus. Yeah. John 10 and 17. Jesus is debating with the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and. Well, the Sadducees are kind of like infidels, aren't they? They don't really believe in anything. They just make believe religion. And of course, the scribes, and the scribes are like what today? Well, how about county clerks? I like county clerks today. The scribes are. They're like county clerks. And uh, all of these people, the Levites, the priests. He's having trouble with all of them. They don't want to turn loose of their religion. And uh, he's showing them the fulfillment of their religion, and they just like it like it is. They don't want to change at all. 10 and verse 17. Dia tuto. Me ho pater. Agapa. Hote. Ego, Tithemi, Tain, Sycane, Mu, Hina, Pauline, Labo, Altain. English and Greek is a lot alike. So it's not as far fetched as you might think it is. Diatoto, Diatoto. Diatoto is a little idiom, it means because of this. Because of this. Me, me, all right? Me, ho pater. Me, the father, he loves. Me there is accusative singular, all right? First person pronoun, accusative singular. Greek has uh, eight cases of it in the noun, eight cases. What are those eight cases? Randy, you got them? Nominative, locative. Lock, nominative, genitive, ablative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, vocative. I know you can do John 114. <laughs> nominative, genitive, ablative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, and vocative. And this is in the accusative case. The Father, he loves me. That's the object. In English, we have the, the nominative or the subject, and we have the object. Okay? Because the Father, me, he loves. All right? Third person singular, present, indicative, active. Now, here it can go subjunctive or indicative, either one. Okay? But the syntax tells us here what it is. Because he loves. It's not he may love here. We know. Do you think the father loves the son? That's pretty indicative, isn't it? So it's indicative. <laughs> All right. Because I, I lay down or I place down the life. Literally, what does that say? It's not really life, but what is it? Psyche. That's what it is. What is the Hebrew equivalent of this? No. Soul. All right. Very good. Soul. 
His, he lays down his whole soul, his whole entity, his whole everything. All right? And what is it in Hebrew? The word for soul in Hebrew? Nefesh. Nefesh. Every animal, everything has a soul, according to the Hebrew language. All right? I lay down the whole of me, the soul of me, my whole person. You know, your body and Jesus' body would have lived forever. We know that, okay? His body would not have died. He was born of a woman and not a man, and the woman does not, does not pass on the sin nature to a child, nor does she infect that child with the sin nature. It is the man that does that, and that's why Jesus could be born sinless through a woman related to the human race without the infection of Adam's blood or sin in him. Right? I lay down the soul of me. The soul. What? Can we ask questions? Yes. I don't need to have a real long discussion, but what's the difference between soul and spirit? Well, Yes. All right. God is trying you, and we're trying you. Angels are probably trying you. The heavens are trying you. God made things in in order. Okay. There are three orders of angels. What are they? Gabriel. Lucifer, and who was the other one? Michael. All right, so Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer order. Lucifer's over the physical, material realm. Gabriel's over the informational or mental realm. And then we have Michael over the spiritual realm. Now we have body, we have soul, and we have spirit. Okay, body, soul, and spirit. The other way. Same thing. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay? You are a triune person. What part of you is like the Father? Huh? The mind. The mind. The mind. What of you part of you is like the Holy Spirit? Your spirit. What part of you is like the sun? Your physical form. Okay? Your physical form. Now, in the end, God will save us body, mind, and soul. Or body, mind, and spirit, basically. The spirit and the soul right here, this is like soul, okay? <coughs> the soul realm. So when you say soul, you're talking about the mind. Yes. That's the intellect. That's the thinking. Okay? The soul. Now, when you die today, your soul doesn't die. And your spirit doesn't die. But your body dies. And your body looks like it goes to sleep. And because of that, we've got people that believe in soul sleeping. And we're going to get into that a little bit later on in this chapter. Or, well, actually, the next chapter. Uh, anyway, God is going to save us body, mind, and soul. Body, mind, and spirit. That is. Uh, there are angels in all of these realms, and there are spirits in all of these realms. There are spirits in those realms. Angels and spirits are not the same. Fallen angels are called fallen angels, and fallen spirits are called what? Demons. demons. All right, they're called demons. Now, let's go on just a little. I hope I answered that just a little bit. Okay. The soul of me I lay down. In order that, again, I may take it up. Look at that one. I may take it up. I'm going to lay down my soul. He not only laid down his body, but he laid down his soul. And what did he do with his spirit? How many of you know what he did with his spirit? Yes. Now, now they did not take his life from him. They, they crucified him, they beat him and everything else, but they did not kill Jesus. He chose the very moment 
when he was going to die. And he dismissed his spirit into the Father's hands. All right? He dismissed his spirit. He dismissed his soul. And he laid his body down. He did it. Jesus laid his body down. Okay? Now, they tried every way in the world to kill him. They tried to kill him for three and a half years, didn't they? That's what we're going to see in here. But he, they could not kill him. They could not capture him until he allowed them to. All right? I may lay down. First person singular. Second heiress, subjunctive active. I may lay it down. I may lay the soul of me down. And look at that word outtain there. What, what, what uh, gender is outtain? That's a third person pronoun. It's accusative, singular, feminine third person pronoun. What part of him is he going to lay down? The soul is feminine, period. The soul is feminine. You may be masculine, but your soul is feminine, period. Okay? He's going to lay his soul down. He's going to lay his body down, and he's going to lay his spirit into the Father's hands. Okay? 10 and verse 18. Who they? Ere, Altain, Op, Imu, Allah, Ego, Titami, Altain, Op, Ima, To, Exusion, Echo, Thane, Altain, Kai, Exusion, Echo, Pauline, Lombain, Alte, Tute, Altain, that is, Tain, Entelain, Elabon, para tu patros imu. All right. No one he takes her literally. See that word up there? It literally it is her. Her from me. But I, I lay it down. Tithemi. First person singular, present indicative active. I lay it down, all right? I lay her down from myself. Exousion. Now, do you remember what exousion means? Remember what that means? Brother Roger, you remember that one? It's a beautiful word now, exousion. All right? Let's see if I can find it real quick. It's just got gobs of explanation. It literally means out of it. Out of the control of anything. It's on page 146 in the uh, analytical Greek lexicon. All right. It's beautiful. It means to have power, ability, faculty, efficiency, energy, liberty, license, authority, rule, dominion, jurisdiction. Now, this word's exousia now. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus said what? We know that's what we call the Great Commission, isn't it? But what is the command? It's not go you therefore. That was a mistranslation, wasn't it? What is it? As you're going. After you've been gone. After you've been kicked out. After you've gone. Okay. Good. After you've been kicked out, what do you do? What is the command? Make disciples. Make disciples and do what? After you make a disciple, then you dip them. All right? You immerse them. You immerse them in the name of or in the authority of or in the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I'll be with you always, you know, unto the end of the age. Exousia. Right authority. Full power. Privilege. Prerogative. To have or exercise power over anything and everything. To not be subject to anything. Jesus was not subject to death. I want you to know that. He was not subject to death. He would have never died. He would have never died. He was not subject to it. He only laid his life down. Why? Why did he allow his blood to be spilled? To redeem us. Okay, to redeem us. Nobody took it from him. 
he said, to possess independent control over anything and everything in existence, what was in existence, what is in existence, or what shall be in existence in the future. That's how powerful he is. All right? Let's go on a little further. And I, I lay her down from myself, literally. I lay her down from myself. Authority, and all of those adjectives and descriptions, I continue to have echo. First person singular, present indicative active, echo. I have. I have it. He always will have it. To lay down, to lay down her and authority I have again to receive her, literally. This is the entole, the commandment, the edict. I received from Little a para means from beside the Father. How long ago does this take place? When did this take place? When did this plan take place? From eternity. Did eternity pass? See this little chart up here. It's got eternity here and eternity there. Back in eternity past, God made all these plans. It says that Jesus Christ stood as a lamb slain from what? from before the foundation, before any physical foundation was laid down. The plan of God, the blueprints of God, were take, had taken place in eternity past. Good to have you here tonight, young lady. <coughs> 10 and verse 19. Oh, last question. Yes. Why all of her? It's just feminine. Nephish is feminine. That's it. <coughs> the word spirit is neuter. Your spirit is neuter. Your body has gender, masculine or feminine. But the spirit is neuter. When it talks about the Holy Spirit, it always, spirit has to be in the neuter gender. Now, the personal pronouns and everything of God, the spirit, will be in the masculine gender. In the Old Testament, where it said, and Spirit God went out and, and mourned over the faces of the deep. When he mourned over, Spirit God, Ruah Elohim, Merapesheth, he mourned over, or she mourned over the faces of the deep. Shekinah, the word Shekinah, now we know it's not a biblical term, but it is a, it is a, a descriptive term of the caring ability of God. All right? Shekinah. What gender is Shekinah in? Feminine. Feminine. How about El Shaddai? El Shaddai means what? El Shaddai, that's Hebrew. We in the Hebrew too. We play in both games. All right, El Shaddai. El Shaddai, that means God all-powerful. Jesus was called the Almighty God. Almighty God. But the word Shaddai means a woman's breast. To nourish. To support to feed. All right? Now, not always can we compartmentalize things. <laughs> Sometimes our minds, the biblical languages are very beautiful. They're very exact. But our thinking, we have to correspond it to that without doing violence to what we know in the Scripture. All right? Schisma. Pauline, Aganito, in tois budeois, dia tus logos, tutos. A split again. A schism. That's where we get the word uh, in English. A schematic is a drawing, but usually a schematic is divided up into different compartments of things. Okay? Your husband's an engineer, isn't he? He knows all about schematics, doesn't he? All right. Schematics and this division. All right. Schizophrenia. 
that comes from this word, okay? Frain, schizophrenia, what does that mean? Frain, in Greek, what does that mean? Mind. That's a mind. That's your horse sense mind. Frame. Skit or split mind. In other words, two people. Separate people. All right? Schisma Pauline Aganito. A division again. It became for itself. Look at that word, middle voice there. Third person singular, second heiress, indicative middle. It became in or among the ones Jews. Jews because of the words these. Now they're all divided up even further. The Pharisees believed what? They believed there were the cat's meow, that they were the most religious and wonderful people that, that ever was. And they believed in the resurrection, they believed in, in uh, spirits, they believed in angels. Matter of fact, they believed in seven order of angels. Seven orders. Okay? They really had it drawn out. They believed in the Mishnah and they believed in the Talmud. And that is the commentaries of the Bible. And they read the commentaries more than they read the Bible. Period. Then we had the Sadducees. The Sadducees were religious, but they were basically atheist. Period. We had the scribes. They are the county clerks. We have the Levites. Those are the ones that are working in the temple. But there was something about these Levites and these Pharisees and this Sanhedrin was put together that was different than ever before. What is that? What happened? How did the wrong man get on the throne? Anthony and Cleopatra, Anthony and Cleopatra put Herod the Great on the throne. Okay. And he killed all the Pharisees and all of the people there, and he imported different ones that would do what he said. He completely replaced the Sanhedrin with his yes men. All right? And he uh, inst instigated a people called a Sakari. What's the Sakari? That's the dagger men. They were the mafia, the which, Jewish mafia. Which disciple was that? Was that John? There were two disciples of Jesus that were Sakari. Simon? The Zealot and Judas Iscariot. They were both Sakari. All right, you got it. All right, Elego, De Poloi, Ex Auton, Demonion, Eke, Kai, Manete, T, Altu, Acuete. <coughs> and they kept on saying, Many of the ones out of them, demon. Now, what is a demon? What is a demon? It's a fallen spirit. It's a rebellious spirit. We have ministering spirits of God, and we have fallen spirits which are called demons. Demons and, and angels are not the same. Angels, angels have form, and they go from one dimension to the other. Sometimes they can come through our dimensions, and we can't see them, but they do have form. They're just as solid as a rock, okay? And all of them look like men, as far as we can have any from, uh, information from the Bible. Spirits do not have form. Spirits seek to dwell in human or animal flesh. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, it, they are... What is referring to there is that we can't see them always, so they're like a spirit. Spirits basically are invisible, aren't they? Now, in the world today, we have poltergeists and things like that. We don't have, we don't, we never have. There are no such thing as ghosts, but I can guarantee you, there's a lot of fallen spirits out there in the world that can imitate anybody that ever lived because they've been there since before any man was created on the earth, and they can tell you exactly. I mean, they don't have no memory problems. They don't get Alzheimer's. They don't get dementia. They're just really sharp all the time, forever. And they can rattle off this stuff, you know, people. And by the way, those, inf and the inf those spirits in the informational realm are from what? From what area? Gabriel's. Gabriel's area. That's the information. Those fallen spirits. Yes. Uh -huh. Saying that the Lord gives us 
ministering angels and he has ministering spirits? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Spirits can minister to your heart. Now, we are indwelt, when we're saved, we're indwelt by Spirit God. He becomes part of us. Okay? God becomes part of us when we're born again. Okay? And that never leaves us, period. It cannot leave us. Zero. It cannot go. Because it's part of our entity. The spirit of rebellion that we're born with from Adam is taken out of us, and we have Spirit God in us. But we have ministering angels, and we have ministering spirits. Period. Angels can save your lives because they're material. And they probably come from Lucifer's realm. Or what we call guardian spirits, or guardian angels, are probably from Lucifer's realm because that is a material realm. Okay? That's what guides you and guards you. Okay? Demons are fallen spirits. And these are the ones that pester us all the time. Pestering spirits. Okay? A demon he has, continue to have, and he uh, manages. Mainete. Mainete. Now, there are many examples in the Bible of this, but I'm just going to give you a couple of them. Okay? Mainete. It comes from, uh, there's a term from Mantuomene. Mantuomene. Now, this is a pagan term. This does not come from Christianity. And this is a demonic term. Somebody that is under possession by demon spirits. Okay? This Mantuamene. Acts 16, 60. Let's go there and look real quick. We'll look at that. Well, I don't have to look at anything. We've got to look at it in Greek. <coughs> Acts 16 and 16. Right after the Gospel of John. Dr. Jones. Yes. Gabriel is from the... Informational realm. Information. The mental oh. realm. Yeah. And soul, right? Uh, he yeah. is... Okay. Spirit is Michael. Spirit Michael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The spiritual realm, and that's the most dangerous realm. People that have started false religious systems, cults and everything else, they have been helped along by demon spirits from that realm, from, from Michael's realm. How do you think that Mohammed got inspired to do Joseph Smith John, uh, Charles Hayes Russell, uh, Mary Baker Eddy, a lot of these people that have founded these religions that have taken people away from God. They had inspiration. Like spirit God inspired the writers of the Bible, we have spirit demons indwelling and causing people information, and that's exactly what it's talking about here. This is taking information from the spiritual realm or whatever and bring it into a physical realm. Mohammed had epilepsy and he would have long seizures and when he wake up from these seizures he would have all kinds of information from the other world. all kinds of information from the world the world. Joseph Smith. How many of you know about the, the golden plates and everything with Joseph Smith? Yeah, he's supposed to found these golden plates, which was baloney. <laughs> but he did this, you know, this is this is a con job. But he would take his head and he'd have somebody writing this down, and he'd stick his head in, uh, in, a, in a hat like this with two stones in it, the Urim and Thurman, and he'd look in there, and he'd be translating what's on these plates, supposedly in what we call Reformed Egyptian. But he would do this and he would read this stuff off to him. Inspiration, but from the wrong realm. We believe that there are ten dimensions, the scientists believe. Spirits and angels run between those dimensions. We are in three-dimensional world that we don't understand anything else about except from the Bible. We have all this information. Now the scientists have discovered it. It's there. Angels and spirits go between these realms without any problem, any of these dimensions at all. Acts 16 and 16, let's go back there. Or two there. 
Acts 16 and 16. Let's look at the little girl here. Acts 16, 16. And it came to pass as uh, we went to prayer, a certain young lady possessed with a spirit of divination. All right? Now this word here, that word, it's, this is the spirit of a pithona, the python, who's called the great leviathan in the Bible, or the great red dragon, the great snake of the Bible, the deceiver, Satan. So she has a spirit from Satan indwelling her uh, to meet us, who again much uh, money she had brought to her masters. Now here we have the word mantuo mene. This means practicing soothsaying, but this is what would happen. As Mohammed would go into trances, whatever, you know, back in the Bible times, epilepsy, when they would be, you have a lot of these people that are demon possessed back there, sometimes it was demon possession. And the spirit would take over them and they would fall into fires, they would do all kinds of stuff as the Bible has recorded and told it. Well, he would come out with all these stories. Now, she has a, a spirit of divination here, mantuo mene, and this word here is manete, which is the same word, basically. Here, and she, uh, which brought her masters much again by this mantuo mene, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God. Can demon spirits, could Satan tell the truth? Yeah, when it's advantageous to them. Okay? Which show unto us, and I've heard a lot of this, it's talking about the way of salvation, period. Some people say a way, but actually it says the way of salvation. The way of salvation. And uh, this she did many days. But Paul, being put out, grieved to the bottom of his soul, said to this demon, to this fallen spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour, and he came out, this spirit, he came out. All spirits, demon spirits, are masculine. He came out. He came out the same hour. All right? He came out of her. All right? And when her, now they may be neuter in gender, but they're masculine in what they are. And when her master saw that the hope of the gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and threw them into a marketplace, into the rulers. And of course, you know, they're getting a lot of trouble here. What happened here? is this woman was prophesying by the ability of demon spirits. The demon spirit had possession of her, and Paul cleansed her from that. And she had no more ability. She couldn't do it anymore. If somebody was a tarot card... By the way, where did all, where did all the tarot cards and, and salt the palm readers go, come from? Who are they, where are they originated? Jews. Oh, the Jews. They were all Jewish. Think about that for a while. All these tarot card readers and, and palm readers are all from the Jewish world. Okay? I don't want to tell you something <laughs> right there in short. All right? Well, she lost her ability. Now if you go back to Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel in the Old Testament, and we have Elijah and we have the prophets of Baal. The prophets of Baal are up there prophesying. Now let me tell you how this prophesying took place back then. Have you ever heard of an old hag? Okay, we mainly the old hag is a witch. Well, in the, the temple of Jupiter, in the temple of, of Zeus and all of these, they usually had an old woman that was a prophet, prophetess. That she would go there and they'd have her sitting on a stool over this uh, vapors coming up out of the out of the you know like a hot spring or volcanic deal and she would sit there and breathe these and they would give her questions and she would come back people would stand in line for days 
where's my uncle's property? He hid it, we don't know where it is. He's dead and it's mine, but we don't know where to go get it, etc., etc. Should I buy this field? I'm going to go into pottery business. Is there enough clay in this field to do us any good? So they'd ask all these questions, and this prophetess would answer them. And she would answer them in a demonic language. In a language that nobody but the priest could understand. Okay? And that's what was that's what this girl in Acts sixteen sixteen doing. She's she's adding, she's talking, she's raving in a mad language. Okay? An unknown language that they don't know. And then the priest will interpret it and write it down. That's what they were doing on the on the Mount Carmel. And of course, uh, they were raving and raving and raving and raving and raving. They were prophesying, and they were in, they were possessed by demon spirits. And they're doing all of this. They're possessed up there. They're talking to themselves in this uh, evil spiritual language. But nothing's taking place because God's in control. Okay. So there we have two examples. There are more examples in the Bible, that, but there's two of them. And now they say that he's under demon spirits and he's prophesying and doing all of these things by the power of Satan. Do you make it a little bit clearer now than it was before? That word means a lot. And he raves. He, in madness, he is under the spirit of Mantuamene. 1 Kings 18, 28 and 29 and 1 Corinthians 14, 32 through 34, all of this is the same. In Acts 16 and 16. He has and he raves. He prophesies. He does all these things. Why him? You listen to him. Why do you listen to him? 10 and verse 21 now. Aloy elogon kauta ta remata uk esten daimonizo menu me daimonion dinate Tiflon, Ophthalmos, Anoexe. And they kept on saying, that's third person singular and perfect indicative actor. They just kept on repeating over and over and over again. These, the words, not he is, of one being demon possessed. He's not, these aren't not the words of one being demon possessed. He's speaking in plain language to us. He isn't going in some gibberish that somebody else has to interpret. He's talking to us straight from God, and he's doing miracles that nobody could do. What was a specific messianic credential that no one else in history could ever do? He healed blindness, and he healed a man that was blind from his mother's womb. And not a demon. He is caused to be able of blind ones, eyes to open up. All right. You can go back to Isaiah 35 and 5, Matthew 11, 5, 9, 27 through 8, 12 and 22, 15, 31, 20, 30, 21, 14, Mark 10, 46, and uh, 8 and 22, Luke 4, 18, and Luke 7, 21, 22, John 5 and 3, 9, 1, and 11, 37. They were supposed, every time Jesus healed somebody, what did he tell them to do? Go to the priest. Why did he tell them to go to the priest? For verification, For verification that he was the Messiah. And the priest had to face the evidence that this man is healing people all over the place. But instead of saying that he's the Messiah, what did they say he was? A really a doctor practicing medicine on the Sabbath. And he's a, he's a sinner because he's working on the Sabbath. He's, just, he's a charlatan, uh, and he's practicing medicine on the Sabbath because he healed a lot of people on the Sabbath, didn't he? Why did he heal them on the Sabbath? Why did he heal people on the Sabbath? Show them it was his day. What? Show them it was his day. Well, that's a good answer, but that's not really why he did it. He is the Lord of the Sabbath, and Megan, you know why? Cindy, why did he do that? Sharon, why did he go pip on the Sabbath? Brandy. I would have said the same thing about being his day. That how about that's the day they how about that's the day they went to church? That's the day they had the spiritual thing on their mind. 
everybody's going to church except for these people that were sick and, and infirm because they couldn't go in the synagogue because they were sinners. Something had happened to them. They had done something wrong because they were sick. So he healed them so they could go to the south. They could go to the synagogue and show yourself to the priest. And they had to get a letter from the scribes. Verifying every time the lepers, the dead, the people they raised that were dead, everybody who was sick, they had to go to the priest. They had to go to the synagogue. Then they had to go to the temple. And they had to make an offering. Yes? In some of the cases when he healed someone, he told them not to tell anybody. Because he didn't want them to know anything at that moment. So they wouldn't even go to the priest? No. Exactly. Well, they would have to go to the priest in the end. He said, but when he, until I get out of your neighborhood, don't say anything. But then they're going to have to go to the priest, regardless. They're going to have to go to the synagogue because now they can go to the synagogue. The blind man could not go to the synagogue. What did the, the people say? Who sinned? The first thing, he said, who sinned? Him or his parents that he was born blind. Didn't, it hadn't anything to do with sin. They thought if you were poor, if you were wretched, that something that God had to be looking down on you with a frown. Same thing as... That's what the Mishnah says. That's what the Talmud says. That's what all of Job's friends said. But we know that the sun shines on the good and the evil. The rain falls on the good and, and the evil. The just and the unjust. All right. 10.22. Again, a tote. Tote. Ta eg tania. En toe yusomois. K moan. Pain. And it became, it came to pass then that the uh, Hanukkah was being celebrated. This is Hanukkah. How many of you know this is Hanukkah? Hanukkah, Christmas today came from Hanukkah. Almost all of everything that we do in Christmas today came from the German Jews that practiced Hanukkah, the Christmas trees, all that kind of stuff, everything about Christmas is from the Jewish. I mean, I know people say it came from uh, Babylon and all that kind of stuff, but this really came from Hanukkah. Okay? And it became then that the dedication in, the t in Jerusalem in the winter, it kept on being. Okay? This is the Feast of Lights. And look what it says in Jerusalem, Jerusalem Lemois. What is, what does that mean? All right. How many are there? Is it singular or plural? Plural. Why? All, every part of Jerusalem is celebrating the Feast of Lights. All of it. From every corner, north, south, east, and west, and everything in between. Okay? They're all, in all of Jerusalem's, the whole city, like, Bakersfield, the whole city of Bakersfield, pretty big place, but throughout all Bakersfield, they're celebrating this. So throughout all of Jerusalem, it's in the wintertime, it keeps on being, of course, and they're celebrating the temple or the Feast of Lights. Now what happened here, the temple was rededicated after Antiochus Epiphanes had defamed it had polluted it, and uh, the Maccabees, what does Maccabees mean? Hammer. Hammer. The Maccabees uh, took back over their country, and they went in, and they wanted to rededicate, cleanse the temple, and they did not have enough oil to do it. They only had enough oil for what? One day. One day. And they had enough oil, the oil multiplied in it, like the widow's oil with Elijah, okay? It kept on multiplying, and they just kept on having enough, and it made enough for eight days. The, the, the candlestick in the tabernacle has how many lampstands on it? How many lampstands? Seven. Uh, a menorah has how many lampstands? Eight. Eight. Because that stands for these eight days. 
these eight days that the lights would burn, and they didn't have any way to consecrate oil. You couldn't use any profane oil or you would be killed. So they had enough oil, they could put it in there, and the oil just kept going. They just kept pouring and kept pouring. And God, the miracle of the oil, the miracle of lights, the feast of lights, and this is Hanukkah. Okay? Now, this was instituted in 165 B.C. Okay? Instituted in 165 B.C. by the Maccabees. They rededicated the temple, and they celebrate it. Even to this day, they celebrate Hanukkah. And they were celebrating it in Jesus' time, and Jesus celebrated the Feast of Lights, or Hanukkah. Okay? And what was the celebration for? The rededication of the temple. But before that, what was the celebration for? There, wasn't, there was no celebration of, no, of Hanukkah no before 168 B.C. No. This is the rededication of the temple and the miracle of the oil. The miracle of the oil. God provided oil for the lamps in the, te in the temple. Okay? In 165 B.C. All right? That's why the Jews celebrate Hanukkah when we celebrate Christmas. Because it's the same celebration. Same thing. All right. Feast of Lights. That's what we borrowed all of. 1023. 1023. Kai, Peri, A, Pate, Ho, Asus, N, To, Eru, N, Te, Stoa, Tu, Solomonos. And he kept on walking about the Jesus, the Jesus he kept on walking about in the temple area, in the porch, in Solomon's porch, okay? In Solomon's porch. Now, Jesus, as far as we know, never went into the temple itself physically. One of his disciples did. Who was the only disciple that went into the Holy of Holies of Jesus' disciples? Who? Judas is the He's the only one that went in there. When he took the money and he went in and threw it right in the Holy of Holies. Now, he could have been killed. That was a death sentence. He could not go in there. Jesus could not go in there. Only the priest could go in there. And only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. And, of course, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, there was a real thick curtain between the holy place and the Holy of Holies, and it was split. And the facsimile of the Ark of the Covenant, which was there, the Ark of the Covenant was never in Herod's temple, not the real one. The real Ark of the Covenant was never there. The real Ark of the Covenant, according to 2 Maccabees, the second chapter, Jeremiah took the Ark of the Covenant, and he took the candlestick and all of the things that were in the tabernacle, including all the furniture of the tabernacle, and he hid them in a the mountain, Mount Pisgah, where Moses looked into the Promised Land, and they hid it in a cave, and they will not get, find it again until Israel repents. And then he'll show them the way. That's where it is. It's not Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's not underneath the Temple Mound and all this kind of stuff that you hear stories about. Second Maccabees says that's a history account. And Second Maccabees is a factual history, and it tells you where the Ark of the Covenant is. As simple as that. Yes. What? In the mountain where Moses walked, looked at the Promised Land. I stood on that mountain. What's the name? Mount Pisgah. Mount Pisgah. It's on that mountain that looks... So, it's in Jordan today. In Jordan. That's also where God buried Moses. Moses is buried someplace there too. Maybe he's buried in the same cave. I don't know. I can't tell you that. All right. So he uh, keeps on walking about in uh, Solomon's porch. And 1024 now. 1024. <laughs> Ek kukro son. Un auton poi yudeoi kai elegon auto ios pote tain sikain hemon heres a c a ho chrisos epe hemen paresia. Here we have the word for Galilee. Galilee. Galilee means what? Galilee. Circle. 
And we have the name, uh, there are Greeks that are called kuklos, kuklos, which means circle. All right. Uh, they surrounded, kukloa, they surrounded, therefore, him. The wands, Jews. They surrounded him on all sides. They, put a, they just made a circle around him. And they kept on saying to him, Until when the soul of us you hold, why do you keep on holding our souls, our life you hold? If you are, if you keep on being the Christ, you say to us, Parasia. Parasia, what's that mean? Parasia. What is Parasia? You remember, Corey? Remember what Parasia is? Uh, no. 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 That's not no shadow. Parasia, freedom of speech. You tell us with freedom, don't worry about it. Just speak and tell us. They didn't want to hear what he said. They're lying through their teeth. They do not want him to speak freely with freedom of speech. Because they're going to kill him. They're out here. They're trying, to, they're trying all the time to bribe people to say that he said something that he didn't say. How many remember the story of Tom Horn? Up in Tom Horn, Wyoming. Tom Horn was a... He was a uh, Apache interpreter. He was a um, an old cowboy. He went to Geronimo and talked to Geronimo. He could interpret for the United States Army. He was there when they got Geronimo to surrender. Geronimo trusted Tom Horn. Geronimo trusted uh, Charles B. Gatewood. Those are the people that he trusted because they were straight shooters. Simple. They were honest people. And. Uh, Geronimo wouldn't talk to anybody. When they bring in other interpreters, he just sat there. And he said, I want him to, to interpret for me. I don't trust you. You people are liars. He just sat there, and, and they keep talking to him, trying to get him to talk, and he just act like they weren't even there until they'd get the right interpreter that was honest, that he could honestly speak to him, and he would not twist his words up. Tom Horn was a... Uh, cleaning out the cattle rustlers in Wyoming. He was cleaning out the cattle rustlers in Wyoming. And they sent him out there to basically shoot them if you can, capture them, bring them in, whatever you want to do. And uh, he shot a, uh, a 4560 rifle, Winchester rifle. And he killed a lot of people. But there was a, uh, a, a feud going on between these two clans. And these one sheep men were mad at these other sheep men, and one of them killed another one's boy. So these guys that had hired him, they went out there, and they said, we're going to get rid of him because he's killing too many people. So they go out there, and they take a rock and put this 4560 shell under it, put the, guy, put the guy's head on this rock, like Tom Horn killed him. And this is a kid. Now, they had it. Tom Bell was a, was a sheriff. And these cattlemen, they got Tom Bell to get a stenographer in there and to twist up Tom Thorne's words. And then at the court trial that they tried him, the girlfriend of the guy that killed the boy wanted to testify, and they would not allow her to testify. This is a, just a trumped-up trial. It wasn't a trial at all. Guess what else? All the people that Tom Horn he killed... Their families were on the jury. <laughs> this is history. Now. That sound like very fair to you, and they, of course, they hung him. As simple as that, for doing his job. <coughs> here we have another kangaroo court. Right here, another kangaroo court. They're surrounded, and they kept on saying to him, "If you are the Christ, tell us plainly." Tell us plainly with freedom of speech. We're not going to twist your words up. Liars. 10.25. Apocrite. Autois. Hoesus. Epon. Himen. Kai. U. Fistuete. Ta. Erga. Ha. Ego. Poyo. En. To. Onomate. Tu. Patros. Mu. 
tauta mature peri imo. And he answered, he caught up and speaks to them. He was caused to catch up and speak to them. That's in the passive voice. His first error, so it's punctiliar action. It's indicative mode, so it's a statement of fact. To them, the 80 plural masculine third person pronoun, the Jesus. Look at the word whole asus there. Whole there is a definite article. And the definite article in number, gender, and case agrees with the noun that it's describing. The Jesus. By the way, what does Jesus mean? What does Jesus mean? It's Yahshua. It's what the, actually the, the name is, is Yahshua. What does Yahshua mean? He saves. Jehovah saves. His name was Jehovah saves. Jehovah saves the create the Christ. Oh, Christos Jesus. The Christ, the Messiah, Hamashiach, Yahshua. The Savior, the Messiah. Jehovah saves. And the Jesus he told to ye, and not ye believe, the works which is I do in the authority of the Father of me. Now the Father belonging to me. That word there is very, it's in the genitive case, but it also can mean the ablative case. I came from the Father, I am possessed by the Father, he is my Father, and I, he is my Father, and I am his Son. You understand that? That's a possessive case. And also the oblative. The Father of me. These things, these miracles, he witnesses. He witnesses. He continued to witness concerning me. God the Father is doing all of these miracles. God the Father is doing all these miracles. 1026. Ola himes u pisuete hote uk este ek ton probaton ton emu but ye not look at that word uk it comes from uk it's u there shortened for phonetics all right for euphony that uh, word there uk what is it that's an adverb of negation and it means actively not you will not literally translated in English it's notly actively not not continually not ye believe second person plural present indicative active you won't do it because not look at that word again not here's the word ook up here it's all the way ook ook este not ye be not ye be, not ye continue to be, out of the sheep of the my, my sheep. Who is Jesus saying that he is here? He's saying, I am Jehovah of Psalm 23, and you're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me. I am the good shepherd, just like Psalm 23. Now, John, the 10th chapter is Psalm 23 of the New Testament. Psalm 23 of the New Testament. 1027. Ta probata. Ta ima. Tes phones. Mu akuasun. Akuasin, that is. Kago. Gnosko. Alta. Kai. Akuo. Thu sin. Moi. The sheep, the one mine, the voice of me, they continue to hear. And I, I know them, my sheep, and they follow me. You are not my sheep. You are not the sheep of the shepherd of Psalm 23. In Psalm 23, it says, the Lord God. The Lord God, there. The Lord God is my shepherd. Jehovah is my shepherd. Jesus is telling them, he told them before this, I am Jehovah of the Old Testament. And John, in John 1 and 1 and John 1 14, John 1 and 1 says, and the word of Jehovah kept on being for all eternity because he kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead because he kept on being God. And then in John 1 14, he said what? And the word or the Jehovah flesh he became and dwelt among us. 
And John uses the whole Gospel of John to prove that Jesus Christ is deity. He is indeed Jehovah of the Old Testament. And here we have him interpreting Jesus' words that he said and telling us that he is Jehovah of Psalm 23. All right. And I give to them life eternal. This is beautiful. I couldn't quit before this. All right. I couldn't do that. And I give, didomy, first person singular, present indicative, I give to them, deity plural, third person pronoun, life, zoe. We got a word zoo from this word. When you go to a zoo, you study life, life forms. And I give to them life, aeonio. How long is eternal life? The only one, that means to stack one age upon the other. Eternal life. I give them eternal life. Not life that's... It's not, not Armenian. But here we have a Calvinistic form of eternal life. Uh, the Armenians believe that you can get saved now. If you fool around, goof up too much, you're lost tomorrow. But if you did that, you couldn't have eternal life then. When you have eternal life, you have eternal life, period. Zip. That's it. And no not. Now he uses a double negative. He uses an adverb of negation and a particle of negation. Not lead, not. They may perish. No not. They'll perish. They shall not perish for themselves. You can't send yourself to heaven, to, to hell after you've been saved. Did you know that? Right here in this verse, it tells you, that one word right there tells you that. Let's look at it. No, not they may perish. Third person plural, it's they. All right. How do I know it's may? The mode of the alpha affirmation, what is that, Sharon? It's the subjunctive mode. And who does this? Brandy, who's the one doing it? Little voice from themselves. You couldn't send yourself to hell if you wanted to. I don't care how much you sin. If you've been born again, well, God may kill you, but you won't ever go to hell. You can't do it. You couldn't do it for yourself. The Lord saves you, and the Lord keeps you saved. That verse, I mean, through the whole Bible, it tells you that, that this is just one little verb right here that has all of it in one place. You cannot perish. You may not. You can't do it. It's not up to you. You can't do it for yourself. You can't do anything that will put you in hell. You may not perish unto the age forever. And not, look at all these adverb negations through here. And not, ye shall, he shall snatch or seize. Who's this? Who's this, who's this bad guy? Satan. He cannot seize. He's not able to seize. He shall not ever be able to seize anyone of them out of the hand of me. They cannot, send, they, he cannot, Satan cannot seize you out of my hand. It's not possible to be seized out of my hand. You can't do it for yourself. I remember in Romans, the 8th chapter, it says there, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And then it says, heights nor depth. Anything in the past, anything present tense, nor anything in the future. And that's what it says right here. Again. Not he shall be able to seize anyone out of the hand of me. 10.29, and this is the last verse. Ho pater mu. Ho dedokin. Mu ponton, mezon, esten, kai, udes, dinate, harpazain. Ek tes keros tu patros. Here we have another word. Here we have the two words for rapture. Harpazo. It means to snatch away. It means raptor, to seize. You know, a, a vulture, a, a buzzard is not a raptor because it doesn't have claws to snatch things up. That's a raptor right there. This is the word harpaze. Ruamai is another word. And the father of me whom he has given to me, all greater he is, and no one he is able to seize, to snatch, to rapture, out of the hand of the Father. No one. God is God, isn't he? God is God. God is God, and there's no greater than God. Satan is a 
is a supernatural being, but he is not omniscient and he is not omnipotent. But God is. All right? That's really good stuff there. We went from uh, 1017 to 29. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Chris, do you have a question? All right. Uh, Brandy, you got a question? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> That's basically the same. We, we, um, we got all of the traditions of Hanukkah from the German Jews, basically. Okay? That's where it came from. But our Christmas is celebrating, obviously, Christ's birth. Yes. The feast of the temple. That's right. Okay. So I thought, I'm totally confused. I thought the, the, the festival of life, which I don't know where I got this, was um, the celebration of God going before them in a pillar of fire and a cloud bringing them out of the wilderness. What, no. What, um, what celebration is that? Well, there isn't really a there celebration. That's a Shekinah of glory. But God did lead them. When the tabernacle was dedicated, the Shekinah glory came and stood over it and just filled it. When the Temple of Solomon was dedicated, the Shekinah glory filled and immersed them. And on the day of Pentecost, the church that was there was immersed in the Shekinah glory of God. There you have three examples of it. Plus, the Shekinah glory is what led them out of Egypt into the Promised Land. All right? But that's not the Feast of Lights. The Feast of Lights is Hanukkah. All right. Uh, Brandy. Christmas, we don't, but the birth of Jesus, I mean, isn't that just kind of a guesstimate? We don't really know if he's been born at that time, do we? There's a million books written about that. And that's uh, a hyperbole. <laughs> Probably a thousand. Uh, all kinds of stuff about that. Uh, Most people believe that he was born in the fall, September, October. Okay, uh, there's some people out now that are tracing the stars and all that kind of stuff, and they said that he was born on December the 25th because of the stars, how they lined up and everything at that time. Um, it's it's book words, <laughs> just words. It doesn't matter what day he was born. God became flesh, and he came flesh to. To, to, to salvage us, the sacrifice to save us. That's why he came into this world. For no other reason, he came into this world. Uh, the Mormons have, you know, the idea of Mormonism is that God was Adam. And all of us are like Adam was back then, and Adam just has a head start. We're all going to have our own little worlds and everything else. And every time somebody's born in the world, somebody procreated in the other world, and we have reincarnation and all that kind of junk. It's really a complicated mess. But that's what man can dream up when he's in a spiritual trance. Okay, uh, Chris. Did you? Uh, I'm still confused about why. I mean, I'm confused. But why is Christmas and Hanukkah closely celebrated at the same time? If they're two different celebrations. Is it just because the Jewish... Germans were Christians? No. So what brings those two at the same point in time? In World War One. You know, first of all, in England, the celebration of Christmas was like a knockdown drag out drunken brawl. In northern Europe, they would uh, bring in all their animals and they would slaughter them and make sausage out of them and everything, and they would eat until they busted and drank everything, and they kill all the animals except for the brood stock because they couldn't afford to feed them through the wintertime. So they sat there and just, just have a drunken brawl. When America was founded, they were never supposed to celebrate uh, Christmas in America because of pagan origins from that source. Okay, in World War I, uh, the Germans in the trenches of Europe they took up and put up a Christmas, well, it was an evergreen with lights on it, and they began to sing Christmas songs. 
and the American soldiers and the British soldiers and the French soldiers and all them finally went out and they finally started exchanging things. They buried their dead, they made a truce, and they, for several days, they just were eating together and everything else, and they were celebrating Christmas together, which was originally Hanukkah because of the tree with the lights on it and all this kind of stuff, see. And uh, anyway, they got together and they couldn't get them to fight again. So one British soldier finally says, shoot one of them Germans. Killing, because they were out there exchanging pictures and, and reading each other's letters, and they were good friends. You know, they weren't really the boogeyman over there and the boogeyman over here. But, you know, society has to make the enemy less than human, so you can kill them. And they found out they were all humans. And so they started shooting again, and of course the war went on. But that was when. Uh, the German Hanukkah, the German Christmas. See, the German Christians began to celebrate Hanukkah like that because it was a lot. It was a neat thing to do. Sing songs. They used to. The Jews would sing songs. They would give presents to each other and all this kind of stuff. This was all for eight days. They did that. All right. That help you? That help you? Sharon. When I <coughs> visited Sweden, one of the things I noticed they had everybody and all father when they went at Christmas time had those lights, but it's only seven lights. Yes. But it's seven lights. Is it, well, maybe I'm electrified now. It's yeah. seven candles and mm -hmm. sort of a pyramid kind of thing. Yeah. So it looks like a menorah, but That's it's right. one less. It's like the... <clears throat> but everybody, everybody, no matter where he went, that was in their window. It was a time to the eat and you know, all the big dinners and all that. We borrowed a lot of this from Judaism, and we borrowed some of it from paganism, period. Uh, the singing, the caroling, the lights, the trees, and all that kind of stuff is borrowed in cultures. Simple as that. Yes? Okay, so back to the uh, the soul being feminine. The soul is feminine. Nefesh is feminine. Uh, su uh, psyche is feminine. Okay, and so when um, you're teaching us that when God created Adam, that in him was female. And, ma and Adam was man and woman. Because he took out of man. He took out of man, woman. Ish is man. Isha means out of man is woman. He, uh, when I did the, if you want to go online and listen to the wedding ceremony I did, I brought that out of the wedding ceremony. All right, uh, from the book of Genesis. Uh, anyway, uh, when God saw that man was not happy, so he caused a great hypnotic a great deep hypnotic trance. He hypnotized Adam. And then he took from Adam's bones, and he took from his fleshes, and he took from his bloods, and he made woman out of man. And then man looked at her, and he said, Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones, and bloods of my bloods. I shall call her woman. When did God, when, when was her name changed? After the fall. Her name was changed. It was not woman anymore. What was it? What was, the, what was her name after? <laughs> that woman. That one. What did Adam name her? Hava, which means life. He just told him that she would be the mother of all dying, but he said he should be the mother of all living because he's looking to the Messiah, the one we're talking about tonight. Anything else? God called him that? No, Adam did. Adam named her, he changed her name from Isha to Hava, the mother of all living, the mother of life. Yes? This isn't a question. He looked at it in a good way instead of a bad way. Oh, she's not the mother of all dying. She's going to be the mother of all living. This, I just wanted to say what a beautiful comfort this is to me. My, my aunt recently passed away. And just, you know... You cannot perish. You cannot be snatched away. Not from possible. God. You know, I mean, that is just such a joy to me right now. Yes. I mean, it's just brought me great joy. Well, joy. Who procures salvation for us? God. God calls us. He saves us. There is a volatile quality in man that he surrenders. Yeah, I let you save me. Yeah. <laughs> 
But God does the saving, and he does the keeping. It's not us anymore. And there's nothing we have to do. We can go wrong. We people, have you ever lived a day without sin in your life? Is that possible? Jesus could do it, but I haven't figured it out yet. You know, I mean, you just can't. Now, that's because we still live in flesh, sarks. But just remember this. Kai Hologos sarks again until and the Jehovah flesh he became. And he understands all of those temptations that you have. Because he was tempted. He was tempted. In the same way that we are, but without sin. Because he had a volition in his self, in himself. But he chose not to sin so he could procure us. We are locked into Adam's sin, aren't we? Even though Spirit God dwells in us, we still have that terrible nature of sin, don't we? Which causes us lots of trouble. And we have demon spirits, and we have fallen angels messing with us all the time. Period. I always know where Satan is. Did you know that? He's about three feet behind me. That's just the way it is. All the time. Anybody? Chris. My son was asking me, I was talking to him about all this, and he, can't, he, he asked me this question, so I said I would ask you, um, can demon spirits possess dead bodies? I don't believe they possess dead bodies because there's nothing there that they want. Period. When Jesus, and I'll give you an example of this, when Jesus confronted a man that was dwelling in the, team, in the tombs there at the Sea of Galilee, the gathering demoniac. There were actually two of them. Uh, we told that there's two of them, but we're, we're specifically talking about one there that had 2,000 demons in him. The demons begged Jesus to send them demons like to dwell in what? Human or animal flesh. He, these demons wanted to go dwell in the swine, the pigs. And the pigs didn't want to live with them. Okay? They didn't want to live with demons in them. They had better sense than people sometimes. Anyway, so Jesus gave them permission to go into the swine, and the swine jumped into the Sea of Galilee and drowned themselves. Now, if you were a Jew back at that time, the Jews got real mad when that happened. They lost 2,000 swine. The Jews were making plenty of money on the pigs. I don't care. They didn't eat them, but they were making money on them. You know, make money on them. Huh? What did you practice in I thought Jews couldn't have pigs. Well, they, that, the, all of these were these were Jews. They were Jewish farmers. They were different people out in that area. Uh, they were probably selling to the Romans. Jews you know by this, nationality. Huh? Jews by nationality. Jews by nationality. Yeah. 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 No. Uh, the Spanish soldiers. When they marched all through America, they brought pigs with them for portable food. And the pigs is what brought the diseases to America and killed so many Indians. The disease, okay? And uh, 1539 and 40, they hit Mississippi where my family lived, the Chickasaws. And uh, Hernando de Soto, I think it was, went in there and brought the pigs, stayed with them that winter. He tried to capture some of them and make them into slaves. They put these socks off, scattered the pigs, and that's how all the wild hogs got started in, in the south. But that's also how the disease, half of the Chickasaws died after that winter because of disease. Okay, portable food. They, 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 armies marched with portable food a lot of times. And the pigs are portable food. And they make money with those pigs. And so, no, they weren't, they weren't Pharisees. They, they probably weren't Levites, but they were Jewy, Jews by person. You know. uh, There's all kinds of Jews. You know, they, there was all kinds of different ones. They were, they were Herodians. They were the Pharisees. They were the Sadducees. They were the Levites. All these different little groups, political groups, and when Jesus was there. Anything else? So the spirits went into the swine and swine down themselves. By the way, tradition says that the Sea of Galilee, the bottom of it, was the gates to hell, the Sheol, the place of departed spirits. 
the Jews that were standing around there, they see these swine go down in there, and they think, now Jesus has sent these demons to hell, because that's the gates of hell. And the great storms that were on the Sea of Galilee, the Leviathan, the supernatural Leviathan, the great dragon would stir up all of this. And of course, Jesus said he was more powerful than the great Leviathan that stirs up all the storms in the ocean either. All right. Anything else? Yes, Brandy. You got two minutes. I don't know if it's <laughs> I don't know if I should say demons or fallen angels, but either way, either one, can they can they get into your mind? Can they get yeah, can they get into your mind? Uh a safe you mean a safe person? Yes. A lost people are total free prey. Yes. There it is. I mean, this is this is open ground. Okay, you can homestead there all they want, but a saved person can be influenced by demons, can be pestered by demons, but they cannot be possessed by demons and then brought by demons because spirit God and the spirit of Satan can't be in the same place. Can they? Huh? Right. Yeah. All right. But can but it can be in your mind? They could. I mean, or maybe perhaps the only way I know how to say it is mine, but it could also be in a realm that... Brain. You know, there's five words, six words for Greek, mind and Greek. Schizophrenia is from the word brain. Yeah, and, and mind and Greek. Can you be influenced by demons? Demonic activity? Yes, you can be. But you cannot be obsessed by it. You cannot be possessed by it. You know, and of course you can always say, "Lord, help me," <laughs> and get us out of here. You know, I don't want any more of this. All right. Are you ready to go turn, be turned loose on the world and go out and do something eternal? All right. Okay. Brandy, would you mind coming up here and just missing this in prayer? <coughs> like a privilege. It's been a long time. Oh, Heavenly Father, so many things to learn, so many truths to uncover. I thank you for Jim who helps us with that, and I thank you for all the people that are in this class alongside me. Um, it's just kind of nice to know that they're there and that there's other people who are really intent on studying your word and desiring to know more of you, and I know that Jim reaches a large audience, not even within this classroom. Lord, we know obviously you're alive and well and and you're teaching us and and aiding us and, you know, giving the physical ability just to be here, the mental ability to understand the spirit, the desire to come. That's all from you, Lord. I mean, that that takes no human effort to do that. That's all you, and we thank you for that. Lord, I ask that you would watch over all of us as we go throughout our week, that you would again provide us with the desire to come and the ability to come and the mind to understand when we get here. Thank you for all your blessings. Amen. Amen.